رحمت الله وبركاته Mashallah, so here you join in all the way from England at this time. I mean, Faraj, just make sure you hear the whole lesson. All right. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala Rasulihi al Kareem. Amma bad. Okay, today's discussion is, uh, okay, got to lower this, see all the comments that come, because the comments are, they're for me to enjoy afterwards, I look at them and I read them and I laugh afterwards. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Nahmaduhu wa salli ala Rasulihi al-Kareem, Amma Ba'd, Wa qadha rabbuka la ta'budu illa iya, wa bil walidayni ihsana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the 15th juz, in Banu Surah Bani Israel, he says that Allah has ordained for you and commanded you to worship Allah, obey Allah and His Messenger. And on the third category, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and that you worship and that you obey and you are kind to your parents. And to remind you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when they get older, if one of them or both of them become elderly, as parents start getting older, and many of us who are in college or older, we start to realize that our parents are not as young and as strong as we once believed as children. There was a time when I thought my father was the strongest and my mother was the strongest person. But then I slowly began to realize that they no longer do the things that they used to. They no longer are waking up at the time that they're used to. They're no longer eating what they used to. They're no longer being able to sit the way they used to. They're no, they're no longer being able to, they're no longer able to understand and listen and have the patience like they used to. And as you see your parents withering like a flower starts losing its petal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts placing white hair upon them. And then it dawns upon you when you see those wrinkles and you begin to realize that my mother and father are not as old as they're not as young as I once imagined. And the question bids and the question comes inside the mind that did I have something to do with this? Was it me that caused these white hair and this elderly age and this weakness? How much of my actions are the reason that have led to my parents being older? How much of my actions and how much of my stress has broken my parents and deteriorated their health? There is a poem that I want to share with you today. And it's a personified poem. But I want to give you a little idea of the value of mother and father and what relationship they have with us. There was a boy who says, Aghra imra'un yawman ghulaman jahilan. A person went to a boy and he deceived him, a little ignorant boy. Binuqudihi hatta yanala bihi al-watar. He says, look, I'll give you some money, but you need to get me something. The boy says, what do you need? He says, my boy, I need one thing. Get me the heart of your mother. Bring it in my hand and I will give you gold and diamonds and all the treasures in the world. The little boy. goes and he takes the sword and he takes the dagger and he impales his mother inside the heart, carves out her heart and takes it. The boy takes the heart of the mother and he begins running to go and catch this reward that he's been given. The diamonds and the gold and the silver and the worldly riches he's given. He's going back to get it. But as this boy is running and running with his mother's heart in his hand, he trips and falls and the heart starts going into the ground and falls inside the dirt. As that heart falls into the dirt and it gets muddled, the child falls down after carving the heart of his mother out. The heart of the mother begins to cry out. As the heart has been, the boy has just killed his mother. This is a personified story. 
the heart falls down and it falls inside the dirt. And as soon as that boy trips, the heart of the mother calls out, Waladi, Habibi, Hal Asabaka min Darar. Oh, my boy, my beloved, Waladi, Habibi. Oh, my boy, oh, my beloved. Have, are you okay? Did you just get hurt? He assassinates her, rips her heart out, but he trips and the mother is worried about him. It was as if this voice of his mother ripped through his soul. It's as if he was the worst child on the earth. He realized what he did and he said to himself, he realized that there is no life worth of living. A child who takes his mother's heart out, carves his mother's heart out. There's no, there's no purpose in living and being a child. So he goes to carve his heart out. And as he's about to carve his heart out, the heart of his mother calls out a second time. The heart of the mother calls out again and says, My child, hold your hand. Don't do it. Don't hurt me two times, my child. Don't hurt me two times. A mother's love for a child and a father's love for a child is so severe, is so strong that when the child gets hurt and gets harmed, the mother and the father, they begin to feel the pain. As we get older and our parents' patience begins to wither, all our mother and father want to hear is a yes. GG, TK, GG, yes, yes. They're not here in the, they're not in the business of trying to change their opinion. But as we get old, we're trying to instill and remind them that we're worthy of something. But in our worthiness, we show them how unworthy we are of being their children. And trying to prove how, how educated and smart and talented we are, we end up showing how uneducated and unworthy we are with our parents. Outside in the world, we are the sweetest people. Everyone loves us. And this is advice for myself and everyone. Everyone outside loves us. Our, our friends, they can chill with us forever and ever and ever. But when we go home, we can't stand few seconds with our parents. We can't stand to look at them. That girl who's treated me like garbage and who has cheated on me and that boy who has left me for my friends and that boy who hurts me and leaves me on red and ghosts me, I will run after them. But my own mother and father, I will ignore them. My own mother and father, I won't care about them. As they're getting older, I tell people all the time, there is nothing more valuable in the world than the dua of a mother and a father. It is a treasure that has no bounds to it. It is the greatest investment for any person's life. It is the greatest investment any human can make. One person in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to his, he came to the Prophet and he said, Ya Rasulullah, my father always asked me for money. Some of us earn, some of us work. And then when our parents ask us for money, we get upset. And you know, some kids even say, my mom, dad, owe me. Mom, you owe me $100. Mom, you owe me $50. One child went to the mother and he showed her a piece of paper and he gave her a paper and she looked at the paper and the paper said for cleaning the dishes, $5. For making my bed, $5 for helping you with the groceries, $5. For setting up the dinner table, $5. The bill is $20. Chores, right? We do chores at home for something. So the mother looks at it, she turns it around and she writes something and she gives it back to the boy. The boy looks at the paper and the paper says, for carrying you in my stomach for nine months, free of charge. For holding you in my arms for two years, free of charge. For teaching you how to talk, free of charge for teaching you how to walk free of charge, for buying you toys free of charge, for cleaning you free of charge, for helping you with your homework free of charge, for getting you clothes free of charge, for making food for you free of charge, for setting up your room and taking care of you and cleaning after you free of charge. And the boy takes the paper and on the bottom he writes paid in full. He writes paid in full. Our parents, how can, we owe, how can they owe us? One Sahabi came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, my dad, Always, always wants money from me. 
So the Prophet Sallallahu said, call your father. And as the father came, he was reciting some poetry in his mind. So the Prophet Sallallahu was told by Jibreel Sallam that ask this man, what is the poem? So when the man arrived, the Prophet said, read the poem that's been on your mind. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I believed you were a prophet, but the fact I was contemplating on something and you knew what I was saying, that is unbelievable for me. That is, that is remarkable for me. I, there's no way I would know. There's no way that you, that you could know this if you were not a prophet. So the Prophet said, read the poem to me. And my dear brothers and sisters, listen to the poem. He says, غَدَوْتُكَ مَوْلُودًا وَعُلْتُكَ يَا فِعَا تُعُلُّ بِمَا أُحْنِي عَلَيْكَ وَتَنْهَلُ he said, as when you were a child, I fed you and I took care of you when you were young. You lived on my earnings alone. The poet, the father says, my child, when some nights you would be sick, I would be up the entire night taking care of you. It was as if you would be asleep in your sickness. It was as if I was sick and you were well. That the fact my child was sick, my heart couldn't take it. And I would be up the entire night. He said, it was as if your sickness was my own. He says, I was scared that my child would not make it past this cough. I was scared that my child might not make it past this fever. He says, when the time came, I had so many dreams. When I was a teenager and I went to college, I had dreams of having a child. And I had dreams and fantasies that my boy will be like this and my daughter will be like this. And when you reach the age of my dreams that I thought that I could have that relationship with you he says then you change your perception and you change your attitude altogether it was as if for the entire life you were taking care of me and I had done nothing for you you were harsh with me. You were bitter with me. You were disrespectful to me. He says, I, my child, listen, we live in the same house. I don't care. Don't treat me like your father. My child, the prophet has said that neighbors have a right on you. Inside your house, I'm at least a neighbor of yours, my child. At least give me the, give me the treatment of of a neighbor if you cannot give me the treatment of a father at least give me the treatment of a neighbor he says my life is becoming less and less and I know my life won't give me so much he says that as I got older, you kept on calling me an old man. You kept on saying, this man is stupid. The, my parents are stupid. They don't know what they're talking about. They, you, you would call me names and you'd make fun of me with your friends. He says, He says, He goes on. And he continues and he says, My child, then you made hard-heartedness and harshness my return as if you were the one doing favors to me. So if you have given me the least right of a neighbor and a stain from being in my case, at least you could have been nice to me and taken care of me. The Prophet ﷺ begins crying and the Prophet ﷺ says, Anta wa ma'aluka li abi. You and your father, you and your wealth and everything that belongs to you belongs to your father. That is why a parent can take from their child's wealth without being reprimanded. The and the, the rights that the parents have over a child. Allah has put Jannah under the mother's foot and Allah has put his happiness with the father. But what do we do? We make the entire world happy. One day, my dear brothers and sisters, you will pick up your phone and you will, you will, look, da, you will look up from your phone and your mother and father will no longer be there. One day, you will look up as those people whose parents have passed away. Not a day goes by without them remembering them. Not a, all of their advices come back again. It was as if 
if you were taking notes in your mind and you will beg to share your happiness with them. Today, when I see something good happens in my life, when something happy, I put it on my snap. I don't send it to my mother or father. I don't send it to my relative. I don't send it to my family. I care of everyone else, but I care about my parents. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept a hukuk of theirs and kept their rights above us. There was a person, there was a man who got in an argument with their father. You know, you can disagree with your parents, but you can't raise your tone. This boy went so far that he grabbed the father by, the sh- by his collar and began dragging him. And as he got to the door, the, boy sa- the father said, Qif waladi, qif waladi, qif. My boy, stop here now. Because let me tell you something. 25 years ago, it was me that was pushing my father and I took him to this door, this very door that you are standing today. My boy, this is co- recompensation for the wrong that I did to my father. My boy, if you go past this, then the same thing will happen to you with your children. The same incident will happen to you with your children. I tell people all the time that if you feel hurt and pained when your, when your friends ghost you, when your bae ghosts you, you haven't felt the pain of a child ghosting you. You haven't felt the pain of a child canceling your phone call. You haven't felt the pain of a child not replying. My dear brothers and sisters, go to your mother and father today. Go to your mother and father today. Kiss them on the forehead and ask them for dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. Because the person that will not be forgiven on the day of judgment is the on Laylatul Qadr is the individual whose parents are upset with them. That person is the one, the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't forget, forgive even on Laylatul Qadr. There is one more poem that I wanted to share with you. If I find the poem, then I can read it. If not, then I'll, 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 I'll probably share it some other time. I can't find the poem. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept that relationship. And when a mother does dua for her child or a father does dua for their child, that dua will be there forever with you. The adab of parents is that when you see them, you kiss them on the hand. You kiss them on the forehead. The adab is that every night you come to them and you do their khidmah. The adab is that you ask them how they're doing. If you see them in the kitchen, help out. Bro, your mom cooks the food and she got to clean the dishes too. Like for real? She has to set the table, pick up the table, clean the dishes. We're at home. We don't even eat on the table with our parents. We'll sit there and eat in our rooms. The food that our father worked hard to buy, we sit in our rooms and eat. We go eat outside. How many times have we brought food from outside for our parents at home? There's a la'na on the individual. Who will go eat out with their friends and not bring nothing back at home for their mother and father. Lana on that individual. Curse of Allah on that individual. Who can bear the stomach of their mother and father being hungry and not care about anyone else. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept a right and a book for them. Absorb their harshness. Take it. Excuse it. The Prophet ﷺ said that every day a person wakes up. There's either two doors of Jannah or Jahannam open for that individual. If their parents are alive, one parent and one door. And he says that they have a right on that person. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, wa in dhalama, even if the parents are terrible, the Prophet said, wa in dhalama, even if they're terrible, even if they're terrible, even if they're terrible. There was a person by the name of Musa ibn Harun. And Malik ibn Dinar, rahimahullah, one day, he finished his hajj. And after he finished his hajj, he saw a dream. And in his dream, it was told to him that go to such and such city, and there will be such a such person there. His name is Musa ibn Harun. Go tell him that his hajj isn't accepted and all of his ibadah hasn't been accepted. So Malik bin Dinar woke up and he's like, yo, who's this Musa ibn Harun? I have no idea. Then he says, goes to sleep. The second day he sees the same dream that there is such and such person. And in that city, his name is Musa ibn Harun. Go and tell him that none of your ibadat, your worship, or anything has been accepted. So Malik bin Dinar goes to sleep, and he thinks to himself, and he thinks to himself that, okay, third day, sees the same dream, 
Someone comes and says, go tell Musa ibn Harun in such a city that his ibadah, worsh, tahajjud, roza, everything, hajj, everything is not accepted. So Malik bin Dinar sets out, enters the city, and he asks, does anyone know who Musa bin Harun is? They said, yeah, 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 he's the guy right there in that, in that corner over there. He went and he saw a man that was shriveled, skin and bones. And he saw him praying salah. After that man said, salamu alaykum, salamu alaykum. He looked at that man, Musa, Malik bin Dinar was a very big scholar. He said, let me guess, you're here to tell me that none of my worship or ibadah got accepted, right? My fast and my soul and sadaqah and hajj, nothing got accepted. And the man was shocked. And he was like, yeah, I, but how did you know? He said, it was 30 years ago. It was the night before Ramadan. And I got drunk. I got high. He got drunk, but in our language, he got high. He came home and his mother got angry and she said, it's the day before Ramadan. It's the first night of Ramadan. Do you not have any shame? Do you not have any haya? He said, in my anger, I pushed my mother. She fell inside the fire area and she got burnt. My wife grabbed me. She tied me up and she threw me inside her room and she locked the room. When I, when I became out of my drunkness, I said, why, have I, why am I tied up? She said, well, look what you did to your mother. I got out and I couldn't believe what I did to my mother. And he said, since that day, I only break my, I fasted every single day. I've never missed a salah, never missed a tahajjud. I, I pray a salah every single day, all the time. And I break my fast with few chickpeas and few, few, few little bit of food just to survive. And every year for the last 30 years, a pious servant of Allah comes and says, none of your ibadah is accepted. None of your worship is accepted. For 30 years, this happened to me. Today we talk about, when I was saying the poem of Aghrama Yawman Ghulaman Jahilan, that that person who beguiled a child and he said, give me my, your mother's heart and I will give you gold and silver and diamond. And many of you who heard that poem, they probably thought to themselves that what kind of silly poem is this? Who is going to cut their mom's heart out for some gold and silver? My dear brothers and sisters, we carve our mother's heart and father's heart out metaphorically every single day while they are alive. We rip their heart out of their bodies every single day while they are alive. For who? For our friends. For our laziness while we're on TikTok the whole day. While we are sitting on Instagram the whole day. While we're playing Call of Duty the whole day. What they want us to do something, we will argue and fight with them. And metaphorically, every day we rip their heart out and we give it back to them. And then we come waddling at iftar time and suhoor time. As if it's a big favor on them that we're eating food. One day you will be the mother and father. One day you will have children. And for every Fir'aun there is a Musa. For every Pharaoh there is a Musa. You could be a Fir'aun and still be inside your home. Earn the du'as of your parents. For that child who has the du'a of their parents is a, is a child who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless beyond imagination, beyond belief. Anyway, inshallah, I will take questions now. Is giving zakat or sadaqah fard in Ramadan? Uh, you have to give zakat when zakat is fard. It doesn't have to be Ramadan or not Ramadan. Sunni Bari Israel or Surah Isra, they're both the same thing. Can you make dua for my sister? She lost her baby. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her better than this she lost. And may Allah make the baby wait for her and at the doors of Jannah. Zuhair, dua for my parents and yourself and all the LSE, London School of Economics peers, writing the exams in lockdown. May Allah make you successful in this exam and the exam, the next world. What if the parent is the one who is distant from a child? If your parent is distant, then you've done your haq and you have nothing else to do. Is there an, is, if there is an abusive relationship between a mother and father, do the kids have any rights? What the mother and father have, have between themselves, right or wrong? That does not change or alter what our relationship is with the parents. That doesn't change. Just because someone else does wrong doesn't absolve us of our responsibility to them. Jazakallah khair for all. I'm seeing all the comments right now of all the people. 
My mother passed away 15 years ago and father-in-law passed away last year. Please do dua for them. May Allah forgive your mother. May Allah unite you both in Jannah. Those who have their parents. I remember when Noreen's uh, mother, or, oh, I think your mother passed away, your father passed away. I remember that day when you sent that message. Tomorrow I will uh, say a poem for, on mothers tomorrow. A very beautiful poem. I love this poem. I read it when I was like 14 or 15 years old. Mufti, my father told me that if you vape while fasting and you remember you fast in Salah, never count again and Allah doesn't accept anything from you again. Well, Allah can accept. Just do Tawbah to it, inshallah, and Allah will accept. We'll make some dua for our friends here today, inshallah. Mehran, Mehran Khan, we'll make dua for some Mehran Khan. I don't even know what your name is. Mehran, I think. And uh, Huzaifa, Mehran and Huzaifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Mehran with an amazing wife and amazing children and put barakat in his home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow him to take the khidmat of his parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give his parents a long and healthy life. Fill their life with nur. May Allah put his brothers Rahman and Hashir on the right path. May Allah put barakah in their business. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never give them a never give them a hungry day in their life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keep them with respect and honor. May Allah allow the kids to earn the du'as of their parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the happiness that happens in Mehran's life, the success of his job, his career, his life. May Allah always keep him with izzah and respect and honor. And Huzaifa Anwar, the cousin of our beautiful Qari Hussein Anwar, may Allah forgive your souls and raise your status and elevate your status and may Allah make you amongst the Qur'an, the dunya and the akhira. Noreen, may Allah forgive. Was it your mother who passed away or was it your father who passed away? Dear mother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her sins, elevate her status. May Allah fill her grave with noor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all the actions that you do, sadaqah jariyah, uh, for her. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your ibadah and worship in Ramadan. May Allah bless you with seeing dreams of, uh, of your mother. You know, once your parents pass away, you will beg for dreams of them. You will beg to just see their face one more time. My, when my, after my grandma passed away, one of the things my mom only asks is that I want to see my mom in her dream. And I was sharing a story with um, uh, one of my friends, Mehran, the other day, and I'll share it with you all as well. My father was very, my father, when his parents were alive, both of them, mother and father, he was very, very obedient to them, very obedient. My father didn't live with them. They lived in Hyderabad. He lived in uh, America later on. But even when he was in Saudi and he used to work in Korean airlines. My dad speaks fully fluent Korean. Whenever he would have a problem, he would take the last flight to Hyderabad, ask my grandmother for dua and take the first flight back. My mother told me this countless times. So though my father was far away and my father was not at home, he was touring the Himalayas with my mother one time. And my grandma was very sick. So he said, let me go and let's go visit, our, let's go visit uh, his parents. So when they went there, it just so happened two days later at the evening of Jum'ah in my father's hand while he's holding my grandfather, my grandfather passed away in his hand. He's living in America, but he got the opportunity of holding his father in his last breath and praying the Salat al-Janazah. Two years later, my grandmother in Ramadan, on the ninth day of Ramadan, my dad's about to go to Tarawih and he decides to stay back and he's holding his mother's hand in his own hand and she passed away. When you are close to your parents and you do khidmat, Allah will, Allah will put you in the same position. But when you hurt your parents, you won't even get the opportunity of doing janazah on them. You won't even get the opportunity of visiting their grave. While they are alive, value them. Go kiss them on the forehead today. Ask them for forgiveness. And write in your room and remind yourself that I will respect my parents. I will love my parents. I will stay quiet. I will ignore I will bear them. I will, I, I will treat them well. Because 
we become oppressors outside. We are activists on the streets. Hashtag free this person, hashtag free that. But we're oppressors at home. We're dhalims and fir'auns at home. The whole world can say we're good, we're this, but the one who gave birth to us, we spit back into their face. May Allah forgive our sins and may Allah uh, allow us to treat our parents with proper respect and earn their du'as. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.